Hey guys, what's up? I'm Kit. This is Kitso Kitso. It's time to get crazy. I've told you guys that I've been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, but what exactly is schizoaffective disorder? Schizo sounds like schizophrenia, but it's not schizophrenia, and affective? Well, what does that even mean? So let's get started. So the term schizo in schizoaffective disorder refers to the psychotic symptoms often found in schizophrenic patients, such as delusions and hallucinations. While the affective part of schizoaffective disorder refers to the affect or the mood, the way you feel, because in psychology, the affect, it has to do with um, mood and how you feel, basically. So there's something in psychology with your ABCs and you have your A, the affect, emotions, B, behavioral, how you act, and C, cognitive, how you think. So schizoaffective disorder refers to that affective part, and I'm pretty sure you're getting the idea that it has to do with mood at this point. At its core, schizoaffective disorder is a psychotic disorder that has symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, such as bipolar and major depression. That is the big definition, and at its core, that's what schizoaffective disorder is. It's long been observed that there are patients that don't really fit into either schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. They, they have psychosis, but they also have mood symptoms. Schizophrenics experience psychosis without mood symptoms, while bipolar patients experience psychosis but with mood symptoms. So schizoaffective disorder is different from both of those because People who are schizoaffective experience psychosis without mood symptoms, but they also experience mood symptoms and often psychosis follows. So bipolar disorder, the big thing with bipolars is that um, if you have psychosis, it's usually associated with mood. So say someone's manic or they're in a mixed state, meaning they're either super high energy or they're going fluctuating back and forth between um, being up and being down, basically. That's what a mixed state is. So say someone is in a mixed state or they're manic or even they're depressed, they can experience psychosis, but the psychosis is only found while they're in those episodes, while schizoaffectives have psychosis in the absence of mood symptoms. According to the diagnostic criteria, you have to have psychotic symptoms for at least two weeks without mood symptoms or to be diagnosed schizoaffective. Schizoaffective disorder is kind of like, honestly, an in-between, where you sometimes have mood symptoms and you sometimes have psychosis, sometimes they overlap, but you don't fit into the category of just bipolar or just schizophrenia. So it's a blending of schizophrenia and affective symptoms. There are two major types of schizoaffective disorder. You have the bipolar type. This is the type that I fall into, in which I basically have bipolar disorder, but I also have psychotic symptoms without bipolar disorder. But the bipolar type is more close to bipolar disorder because people who have this type kind of basically experience bipolar disorder. You also have the depressive type. This is when people, the affective part of schizoaffective is related to depression. So they will still have psychotic symptoms without the mood disorder, but when they do have a mood disorder, it resembles depression. Schizoaffective disorder is kind of known to have a better prognosis than schizophrenia, but a worse one when compared to bipolar disorder. It begins in late adolescence or early adulthood, usually between the ages of 16 and 30, and while it is most intense in the 20s, it does get better over time. Which is good news for someone like me, right? So what exactly puts you at risk for schizoaffective disorder? Well, if you have a first degree relative that is bipolar, schizoaffective, or schizophrenic, you are at a higher risk for developing schizoaffective disorder. And life events that are stressful has also been known to be a risk factor for schizoaffective disorder. In the DSM-5, I'm gonna throw up the criteria here. You can pause it if you wanna read it. I'm not gonna read it out to you. Um, but basically, the DSM-5 describes it as a distinct diagnostic entity. It is a psychotic disorder, but it's not related to, directly related to schizophrenia, and it's not directly related to bipolar. It is its own entity, and this is really important because up until this point, uh, schizoaffective disorder has been in the schizophrenia chapter, it's been um, known as a, on the schizophrenia spectrum, and it depends on who you talk to about whether it's actually still on that spectrum, but the DSM-5 describes it as a distinct diagnostic entity. But you might be wondering, well, what is criterion A of schizophrenia? Well, it refers to delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, 
disorganized behavior, such as catatonia, and negative symptoms, such as affective flattening or a lack of emotion and a lack of motivation or abolition. That's just to name a couple of them. Two or more of these are necessary in order to be diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. For me, it's the delusions, the hallucinations, and the catatonic behavior. In previous editions of the DSM, you only needed to have one symptom if that symptom was multiple voices conversing with each other or a single voice narrating your life from inside your head, which has happened to me and it is very, very, very distracting. Treatment of schizoaffective disorder is different from the treatment of schizophrenia, and it's also different from the treatment of bipolar disorder. Schizoaffective people must take an antipsychotic medication all the time, which is very similar to those with schizophrenia, but they also must take a mood stabilizer all the time, or an antidepressant all the time, which is similar to bipolar disorder or depression. So because schizo- schizo- blah, 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 words Schizoaffective people experience mood symptoms and psychotic symptoms independent of mood symptoms, so they have to basically take one of each in order to have successful treatment. So for me, I take Zyprexa. The Zyprexa stables, stables out my moods. Wow. The Zyprexa kind of like provides stability in terms of my voices and my other psychotic symptoms, and it actually works as a mild mood stabilizer as well. But I also take Lamictal and Lithium in order to stabilize my moods. So it's kind of, again, a little bit of schizophrenia treatment, a little bit of bipolar treatment, but it's not similar to either of those treatments more than just like taking one of each. So because schizophrenics don't take mood stabilizers, but bipolar patients only in episodes take antipsychotics. They do not do a maintenance treatment of antipsychotic medication, which is what happens in schizoaffective people. Hope this video kind of told you a little bit more about schizoaffective disorder and answered some of your questions. If you have more questions, I've linked every source that I've mentioned in this video in the description box down below, so hopefully you can do your own research and learn a thing or two. But until the next video, I will see you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and thank you for joining me in making the uncomfortable comfortable. Bye-bye. <laughs>